Hello guys, welcome to my turn. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the components of the biliary apparatus. We have also discussed about the introduction to the biliary apparatus, uh, apparatus and also about the complete anatomy on gallbladder. So what are the components of the biliary apparatus? First, we have the right and the right and the left hepatic ducts. Then we have the common hepatic duct. Common hepatic duct and also we have the gallbladder then we have the cystic duct cystic duct and finally we have the bile duct which is also called as the common bile duct so these are the biliary components or components of the biliary apparatus we have uh, introduced to the biliary apparatus and also we have uh, another anatomy video on the complete anatomy of the gallbladder now we'll start discussing about the uh, hepatic ducts so what are hepatic ducts coming to the hepatic ducts so there are right and the left hepatic ducts that come from the right and the left lobes of the liver we have the river, liver liver we have the right lobe of the liver and the left lobe of the liver we have the right hepatic duct and also the left hepatic duct and they come from the right and the left lobe of the liver and they emerge through the porta hepatis they emerge through the porta hepatis and then they will unite at its near, near its right end to form the common hepatic ducts at the right end of the porta hepatis they will unite together to form the common hepatic duct and then it is joined by the cystic duct this is the cystic duct from the gallbladder it is joined by the cystic duct with the acute angle this is an acute angle right this is uh, this angle is called as the cysto hepatic angle this angle is called as the cysto hepatic angle so in the right free margin of the lesser omentum the common hepatic duct lies to the right side of the hepatic artery it passes through the lesser omentum this is about the right and the left hepatic ducts coming to the common hepatic duct the common hepatic duct will arise from the right and the left hepatic ducts this is the common hepatic duct we also see in the accessory hepatic ducts accessory hepatic ducts is also seen in about 15 percent of cases accessory hepatic ducts means other than the common hepatic duct we have some other ducts which will open into either they will open into the gallbladder or they open into the cystic duct or sometimes they may open into the common hepatic duct or also they may open into the common bile duct so we also have the accessory hepatic ducts in about 15 percent of the cases that will open into different terminations so this is about the common hepatic duct and also the right and left hepatic ducts now let's discuss about the cystic duct so coming to the cystic duct So what do you know about the cystic duct? The cystic duct is around 3 to 5 cm in length. 3 to 5 cm length and it will run along the backward and downward from the neck of the gallbladder. It will run in the lesser omentum. Lesser omentum with the common hepatic duct and also joins it at an acute angle to form the common bile duct. I told you that the cystic duct will join with the common hepatic duct to form the common bile duct. And this angle is known as the cystohepatic angle. Its junction with the common hepatic duct is usually situated immediately below the porta hepatis. Immediately below the porta hepatis. That conjunction is situated immediately between the porta hepatis. So, the coming to the mucous membrane of the interior of the cystic duct. We have the cystic duct, right? So, the interior of the cystic duct, we have a spiral valves like this. These are the these are known as the valves of Heister. So the mucous membrane lining the interior of the cystic duct is thrown into series of crescentic folds, which are around five to ten in number, and they project into the lumen in a spiral fashion. The uh, fashion this is called as the valve of the Heister. So what is the significance of the valve of the Heister? The valve of the Heister will keep the duct open. It will keep the duct open so that bile can pass from the gallbladder to the common hepatic duct and also from the hep common hepatic duct to the gallbladder for the to and fro motion of the bile 
this will help the known as the valve of the hester so when the uh, common bile duct is closed at its inferior end the bile is secreted by the liver it will fill the duct and then it will pass through the cystic duct into the gallbladder and when the common bile duct is open the bile flows into it from the common hepatic and the cystic ducts so this is about the anatomy of the cystic duct now let's discuss about the common uh, common bile duct common bile duct or it's also known as cbd so the common bile duct is formed near the porta hepatis formed near the porta hepatis porta hepatis as the common bile duct is formed near the porta hepatis so it is uh, formed by the union of the cystic duct along with the common hepatic ducts what is the length of the common bile duct it is up to 7.5 cm or 3 inches in length and the diameter of it varies from 6 mm to 8 mm coming to different parts of the common bile duct what are different parts of the common bile duct it is divided into four parts what are the four parts a we have the supra duodenal part b we have the retro duodenal part retro duodenal then we have the infra duodenal part infra duodenal and finally we have the intra duodenal intra duodenal so these are the different parts of the common bile duct i'll just draw you the uh, draw it to show you this is the gallbladder it will open with the cystic duct joined by the right and the left hepatic ducts along with the common hepatic duct this is the common bile duct and then what happens this is the duodenum duodenum will come like this and it will go like this so this uh, duct will go into the duodenum along with the pancreatic duct found by this is known as the common hepatopancreatic duct so what you have the supra duodenal the common bile duct that is above the duodenum this part is known as the supra duodenal part then we have the retro duodenal this will go behind the duodenum behind the duodenum that is the retro duodenal part and then we have the infra duodenal part just below the diaphragm below the duodenum what we have is the infra duodenal part and then we have the intra duodenal part of the common bile duct which is situated inside the second part of the second part of the duodenum second part of the duodenum so these are the four parts of the common bile duct now let's uh, discuss about the arterial supply of the common bile duct we'll just go it uh, through superficial so what happens the upper part of the bile duct is supplied by the upper part of the bile duct it is supplied by the uh, atwig from the descending branch of cystic artery we have the cystic arteries right which supplies the gallbladder so a twig from the cystic artery which is the descending branch will supply the upper part of the common bile duct and the middle part of the duct is supplied by the right hepatic artery the right hepatic artery will supply the middle part of the common bile duct and its lower part is supplied by the ascending branches of the gastroduodenal we have the gastroduodenal and also the superior pancreatico duodenal arteries which are branches of the common hepatic artery from the celiac trunk so they supply the inferior part of the common bile duct so the arterial supply of the common bile duct is clinically very important because if the anastomosis between the superior and the inferior pancreatico duodenal arteries if it is poor then the ligation of the superior pancreatico duodenal artery during surgery it can lead to gangrene gangrene of the common bile duct or it is also known as the tissue duct of the common bile duct so it is surgically very important to see the anastomosis between the superior and inferior part of the uh, pancreatico duodenal arteries so this is about the components of the biliary apparatus thank you for watching the video till the end please make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and also share it to our other friends who, who might need the help of anatomy thank you so much